One of the common misconceptions that I often hear is the overuse of the term resiliency when it comes to divorce. Uh, people talk about divorce as being a transformation or uh, a necessary event when people come into conflict, um, a way to resolve matters and to move forward. Really, divorce is more like a car crash or a death. It's not something that uh, you should invite into your life. It's something that leaves a, a traumatic and emotional scar uh, that has biological and neurological implications. I think it came in stages. I remember thinking on our third date, distinctly remember, we were just sitting at dinner talking and I can't even remember what he was talking about but um, he he just I was just struck by how genuine he was and he's very sort of settled and confident in himself and I just felt like I could trust him and I remember just thinking to myself you know I I, I really like him I like this guy, I like this guy. Perhaps you would better start from the beginning. When I met my first wife, Marissa, um, everything was actually pretty great. Uh, I had never met a woman like her before. She was fun, outgoing. We really just sort of hit it off um, right away. When I first met Jason, I was really attracted to his eyes and his smile, and he had a really great dick. And he was so sexually adventurous and passionate and this really gifted lover. Marissa was very open to exploring her body and in turn exploring mine. Um, but one of the things that I noticed was as the relationship turned into an engagement and then a marriage, um, she often had a little bit of, I guess what I would call a revisionist history when it came to our sex life. He lost that sense of sexual whimsy I just really needed. And what good is a great dick if you'd never get to use it? Um, and the more I tried to spice things up, it, the more vanilla it became in bed. She would fancy herself a little bit of a um, savant and a master of the dark arts when it came to the bedroom. When a child grows up without a father figure in their life, um, it leaves them adrift. Uh, for Jason, this was especially traumatic uh, because when he was first married, uh, he didn't know how to act. He didn't know how to be. Um, a husband to his wife. He just isn't that guy. He doesn't know how to please a woman and I just don't think he's ever gonna change. I don't think he's even gonna try. She either wouldn't be home and wouldn't return home for hours on end or she would be so blackout drunk that she would call me another man's name. Her uh, wanting him to engage in uh, sexual practices that he wasn't comfortable with, uh, the different toys that she brought home, the different men that she brought home. I've always been an exhibitionist really draw, drew out his, his insecurities and allowed him to then say, well, clearly it's not my fault that I don't want to get into these depraved acts. It's, it's her fault, and that's why the marriage ended. I happened to go into my bathroom and find another man's watch sitting right next to my toothbrush. The shower was wet, so somebody had used that. And when I questioned my first wife as to what happened, I'll never forget the response. It was as if it was my fault for waking her up and preventing her from sleeping. <laughs> A part of me does still miss him. Finding the right guy now that I'm older has been a bit more difficult than I expected. And having some guy buried balls deep in my ass is exciting in the moment, but it doesn't help you start a business or take care of you when you're sick. Wow, that was quite the trip down memory lane. A couple years after my marriage to Marissa ended, I took a new job and moved to the other side of Massachusetts. A few weeks after the move, I met my current wife, Natasha. We are gonna walk everywhere to burn off as much calories as possible so that we can eat our faces off tonight with delicious sushi from Koi. Dang. I remember being intimidated because she was beautiful, strong, independent, and super Portuguese. She stuck by me even though the failed marriage under my belt wasn't exactly a check in the right box. She was patient with my crazy travel quirks, 
So what you see here is two different motion sickness drugs. And for the first time in my life, I shared with someone a desire to start a family. She said yes when I popped the question. We honeymooned in Maui. There was a Jeep. It was awesome. We are off to get fish tacos. I'm not hungry yet, but we will work up an appetite and have some delicious tacos. And then we're gonna get some shaved ice, baby. Shaved ice. A few months after getting married, we took a trip to Los Angeles. Natasha had lived there for almost a decade, so she was the ultimate tour guide. So we're gonna head back to our hotel. They have a happy hour on the rooftop from five to six, which starts in seven minutes. Sweet. This is what growing with a partner is supposed to be, and I've been reaping the benefits ever since. The gift that keeps on giving, this marriage of mine, ours, I think my style that I'm going for today, honey, is um, like vintage, filthy Mickey Rourke. Yes. <laughs> kind of greasy. Yeah, greasy Mickey Rourke. Sometimes when I look back, I can't believe how far I've come and how much I've grown. Once you move on from something as traumatic as divorce, it's easy to assume you've learned everything you needed to because you went through fucking hell. When the pain scars over, you wear it like a badge of honor, something you're proud to have survived. Another thing I realized uh, after my first marriage was over is that it's quite often easy to process the pain and sort of get over uh, the divorce and not necessarily ask yourself what you did or how you contributed to the marriage or the failed relationship. Um, so you can kind of tap into that, lean into that pain and that, that discomfort and figure out you know, what you did to ensure that you don't do it again, you don't find yourself in a similar situation. The answers to these questions are hard to face. If you're not relentless with your pursuit of self-improvement, if you're not honest with the therapist you pay to help you, if you don't lean into the fear and pain, you won't begin to fix what's fundamentally broken. So as Jason moved forward post-divorce, uh, he never got a clear understanding of exactly what it is that he needed to work on to develop himself as a man and later a future partner. Natasha is my reward for dealing with the pain and terror of every breakup I've ever had. There was a couple outside that was fighting as soon as we came in and uh, we decided to take a separate elevator. It's super awesome. They're on our floor. So that's what you just heard. They're headed up to the rooftop for some more alcohol. I'm almost wondering if it'd be irresponsible for us not to go to the rooftop. I was kind of thinking the same thing. She is that badge of honor from my divorce. She is also the harshest reminder I have that coping with the pain of divorce isn't enough. Natasha reminds me of my failure to dig deep, to face the things that caused me to be a terrible husband the first time without actually doing terrible things. If he doesn't resolve the, the traumas of his past, if he doesn't deal with the absence of a father figure, if he doesn't develop a healthy relationship with his mother, which he hasn't, um, if he doesn't learn how to be the man that he is meant to be, uh, then this relationship will fail like the previous one before it.
activated. I want you to know that I'll always be there with you through any difficult times we might face. And to celebrate with you and remember all of the special moments in our lives, our life together. You're my best friend and I'm honored to become your wife. I love you. In about an hour and a half and about 90 minutes, I am due to appear in court to finalize my second divorce to my wife, Natasha. So I'll be doing this again for a second time. That's where I've been. That's why there's been no videos on this channel. Uh, this has been a very difficult video to make. And as much as I try to throw in a lot of stupid jokes and some genius humor, um, a lot of it, in fact, all of it is just to mask how painful this process has been. And yeah. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And truthfully, I don't know if this is going to be my last video on this platform or the first of the next 99. So you'll find out when I do. I don't see this current relationship working. You're my best friend. And this is not my face. And this is not my life. I love you. And there is not a single thing here I can recognize. And this is all a dream. And now you are real. And I will And I can change my life. Fuck you. I'm honored to become your wife. I love you. I don't see this current relationship working. You're my best friend. I almost kind of felt like I was like a little bit like in a time capsule. And there is not a single thing here I can recognize. This marital union has been terminated.